Okay, cool. All right, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. Um, sorry about all the technical issues. Feel free to post in the chat if you have questions about anything. And we will just uh, keep going until I either run out of time or somebody says that it's not working. Um, so I just wanted to do a live video building the um, Rev7 Apple II Plus from Reactive Micro. And so this is a kit that Henry Corbus has put out. Um, there's two different flavors of it. So if you go on his website, which I have up here on the live feed, and by the way, can everybody hear the audio? Let me type audio working. Um, so you should see, okay, great. So you should see the website up here. So this is from Reactive Micro. Um, it's the Rev7 RFI motherboard. There's two different kits. So if you look at it, or you can get it assembled also, and it depends the type of ROMs that you want to get. So this, there's the 93 series or the 27. The 93 comes, actually doesn't come with the ROMs, but that's designed to be used with the original 9316 or 2316 ROMs, which came with the original Apple II or II Plus. And then the 27 series comes actually comes with 2716 EEPROMs, which are um, easier to come by and they're also easier, um, I'm not sure if they're easier to program, but they're just easier to source. Um, and there's a difference in the, the actual pins on those chips, so they're not cross compatible without doing a few modifications. So it's the chip enable pins, I think it's two pins, 18 and 21 or something like that. Um, you can make them compatible by just doing some little jumper wires, but I'd recommend if you're just starting out and you want to build a kit going with the 27 series, because you'll have an easier time finding the ROMs, and they're also just easier to, um, if you wanted to program your own ROMs, then you could do that uh, much easier with that board. Feel free to ask questions also in the chat. I'm trying to keep an eye on that too. This is the first time I've ever done any of these live streams, so I don't really know what I'm doing, and it feels kind of weird to actually just be talking into the void. Um, so the board itself, if I can hold it up, and I've got two cameras here, so let me switch to the other. Uh, this is actually my iPhone and the other camera, so you can see um, the board kind of up close there. So it's a pretty faithful reproduction of the original board. Obviously, um, it's a lot newer looking. Um, here's the reactive micro stamp on here, but other than you know, it's brand newness. It's actually uh, faithful to the original with the exception of if you get the one with the 27 series ROMs, then I'm assuming some of the lines are a little bit different. Maybe somebody could confirm that on the chat. Um, if Chris Auger is online, he, he actually just did this build a few weeks ago and gave me some good tips. And so I'm assuming that some of the, uh, some of the, the wires or the lines in here are just slightly different between this board and the 93 series board. So then along with the, the board itself, you get a huge bag of components and I'll try and just give you a sample of, so here's all the resistors, capacitors, um, there's some diodes, there's little things like here's the, the speaker plug, the audio and video jack. You get the edge connectors uh, for the card, for the uh, cards, and then you get a whole bunch of sockets there's a, I'll only show hold up one of them but there's like seven packages of these and then finally oops just dropped one here are actually here are all the chips and actually yeah these are sockets and then here's all the actual chips themselves um, and I'll get up I'll get that out a little bit while I can just get it out now and show you so there are all those so you can see all the chips there, and I just dropped one on the floor, so I'm gonna go pick that up. Okay, let's see, what, is, uh, what does Chris say here? He added, he being Henry, I assume, um, added a 7.4 LS04 at location G11. Okay, and that makes, uh, let's see, that makes the 
EEPROM OE, is that output enable, I assume, uh, work correctly with the slot and right. Okay, so where is G11? So G11, where is that? right that's right here so actually i have i don't know if you can see that i have an actual original board here um that i got just for for replacement purposes for chips and so i'm actually looking at that and so you can compare let's see how can i do this so you can see that without scraping it Okay, so here's where the 6502 goes. So that's that there. And then here's the 8304. And then you can see Henry's added in a 74LS04 right there. And then it just continues with the other three chips. And actually, interesting that on the original board, there's room for a, um, there's room for a chip there, but there's nothing actually in there. I wonder, does that mean that Apple actually was planning on doing the same thing then and decided not to or what? Maybe somebody knows the answer to that. All right, I'm going to stand that back up. So that's just my reference board. Um, so as far as customer service, Henry's actually um, really good. So his, um, his website is a, a little bit bare bones in terms of the actual instructions on how to assemble it, but there's lots of pictures. When I got the kit, it was actually missing um, four chips, and then he just uh, mailed those to me, and it took a couple days to get those. So he's really good about, you know, if you're missing something or something doesn't quite work right, um, Reactive Micro is really good about that. So let's go ahead and put these away now. Without making a mess. And everything ships in these static bags here so you don't have to worry about static electricity um right f11 okay that makes more sense oh f11 what's he saying okay so chris says earlier layouts had two data bus drivers in place of the 8304 okay they removed the one socket when they changed to the okay um excellent so I think the, the, the key to, you could, you could kind of debate about which, which order to do things with a kit like this. Um, and I know Chris did it a different way, which he was telling me, but typically for kits like this, and when I did the mocking board or the phaser kit, it's usually best to start with the, the, the shortest components so that you can actually just lay them flat. And then you can kind of build up from there. The trouble is if you start with something, say like the edge connectors or some of the sockets, um, then when you put in things like resistors or capacitors, they, they won't, you, you won't be able to press them flat when you flip the board over. Um, and so it just, at least for me, it just makes it a little bit easier to, to, to solder if you start with the shortest things. So I've got all of the resistors and I think we'll just start with that. Just real quick. Um, I think I'm not the best necessarily when it comes to, to technique, either for worrying about static electricity or I'm sure for soldering as well. Um, you'll want to have some workspace which is uh, relatively free of um, anything that's going to cause any sort of you know, static uh, discharges or anything like that. I do have a solder mat here um, underneath. And then as far as my equipment goes, I just have a pretty cheap Weller soldering station. This is a, uh, I think it's a 30 watt um, soldering iron there. I'm trying not to burn myself while I'm doing this. Um, and then I've got um, some tip activator, which just cleans off the, uh, cleans off the tip of the soldering iron and makes it uh, much easier for the, the solder to flow onto it. Um, here's some lead free solder, pretty thin. And then I've got just a, a, a brass sponge here for cleaning off the tip. Um, and then finally I have a, a flux pen. And this, this just cleans off the surfaces when you're going to do the soldering. 
you just need to make sure if you use this, um, you want to clean it off afterward. And I typically just do that with like isopropyl alcohol, because um, otherwise it it says it's actually pH neutral, um, but I think I would worry a little bit about it kind of eating into the board. Um, anyway, I just always I, I just always clean it off afterward just so it doesn't leave some sort of mark or something. So. Okay, let's see. Okay, um, I guess what I'm going to do is just kind of start soldering, and then maybe if people have questions, they can put it into the chat, and then either I can answer it, um, or Chris Auger, if if he's um, willing to, he can answer it, or anybody else who's on there. Um, so yeah, why don't I just go ahead and start with that? So what I did, let's see, I don't know if you can see that from here. I want to hold up all these resistors. Um, I actually went ahead and I labeled all the resistors, so they came unlabeled, which is a little unfortunate. And um, you know, it's easy to look up all the color coding for resistors, but actually, what I did is I just took a multimeter and just measured them all because that was even faster. Um, and then on the I'll show you, let's see if I bring the Reactive Micro website back up. So Henry's got on his wiki page here, he has a, a nice detailed um, photo of what the board should look like after it's all done. Um, and so that's actually also a good reference to use if you're wondering, you know, if you're not sure where components go um, or the orientation of components. And then on his other wiki page, uh, for building it, he has a list of all the resistors and where they actually uh, go on the board. Hey Dave, how's it going? Okay, what is, see Chris says, just remember don't cut off the C14 leads when you get there. You want one of the leads to connect to a pin on the video header, okay. C What's he saying? Don't cut off the C14 leads. All right, Chris, you gotta give me more details than that. Is that a capacitor? I'm assuming that's what it is. Oh, I see it. Yep, okay, there's C14. Gotcha. Yep, okay, so. Yeah, so let's see, let me, um, Actually, I'm going to go over here to, let me switch real quick. Um, hold on. Yeah, okay, so a couple things that, that Chris pointed out to me um, on Facebook. So this is the video connector. This is like the external video connector here. And he noted that um, there's a 12 volt line that's supposed to go to that, and apparently that's not actually hooked up. Um, so that was just kind of one minor mistake with the board. And I wonder if you can actually just see that right there. Um, and then there's another resistor that isn't labeled. So down here, I don't know if you guys can even see this because I've got it covered up here. Um, it looks like there's a resistor down here that isn't labeled. So this should be R1. Um, so that's another thing to pay attention to. And yeah, okay, so let's see. Okay, so, so if I understand Chris correctly, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take the extra wire from that capacitor at C14 and just use that to jump over to the 12 volt line. Is that correct, Chris? All right, well, let's go ahead and we'll just jump in. Um, this probably won't be the most exciting video because I'm just gonna be kind of soldering away, but I think if you guys wanna just keep chatting, um, I'll try and pay attention to it. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna dive in and now that I've got everything labeled, um, we are just going to start with a bunch of resistors and we might as well just start up in this corner over here. So let's see, R10 and then we've got 
R30 and R17. So R10 is uh, 27 ohm. Okay. And of course the video is lagging behind. Um, so if I start to make a blunder, somebody stop me, but it, it'll probably be too late or something like that. Um, so R10 is 27. And I'm just going to poke these through. And for resistors, you don't have to worry about uh, what direction they're going. They're, they, it doesn't matter. For some of the other components, like some of the capacitors, and definitely for the diodes, you'll need to worry about the orientation. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, let's see. And another thing about the board layout, the Apple was pretty haphazard in the way that they uh, put the numbers on here. So that makes it kind of an extra challenge because you just got to kind of hunt around until you actually find the uh, the correct thing. So for example, here's R10, and then right next to it is R30, um, and then next to that is R17. So let's see, so R30 is a 12 kilo ohm. 12 kilo ohm at R30. Okay, and then I'm just putting these through and I'm just kind of bending the legs over a little bit flat just to make them so they stay in. And then R17 is a 12 kilo ohm also. Okay. Dave is asking, lagging by how much? Um, I don't know. Like the actual video, is that what you're talking about? I think it's like five or 10 seconds or something like that. So presumably I'm not that quick. Um, I was trying to stream this earlier to both, actually I'm gonna make these the same orientation just cause I'm slightly anal. Um, I was trying to stream to Facebook and YouTube using something called Restream. And it was just, I don't know, for whatever reason, it was just super laggy. And like the video was out of sync with the audio, which was super annoying. Um, Okay, R15 is what? A one mega ohm. So let's see, R15, one mega ohm, okay. Hope I'm doing these right. This is some exciting video streaming here. Okay, R16 is another 12 kilo ohm. All right, we're gonna roll with those. Yeah, okay, so Chris says he installed his resistors so they read uh, left to right. I think I'm actually doing that um, as well. I didn't necessarily plan it that way. Um, yeah. So again, it doesn't matter about the resistors, which direction, but okay, R19 is um, another 12 kilo ohm. The good thing about the, the Apple II Plus, which, which makes it a really nice um, computer is that everything on here is off the shelf. In other words, you could just go and buy all these components. Obviously the ROMs um, need to be programmed, but everything on the board itself is like off the shelf components that you could have bought back in, you know, 1977 or whatever. Um, unlike like the Apple IIe where they started using proprietary chips um, that were custom made. And so that's the point where you um, you can't just go and buy that stuff. You actually have to, you know, find a source for it, either old new stock or somebody else's board. Okay, so that's that's a bunch there. Um, we've got R29 there, and R29 is another 12 kilo ohm. Okay, we're using we're using all these up. Um, 
so a lot of this stuff up here is all the, the video output circuitry. Actually, most of the board is video. Um, it's actually it's what a lot of the chips end up doing. But kind of this whole side down here and through the bottom is all kind of circuitry controlling um, all the different you know graphics modes of the Apple II and then converting it from the from the internal mode to the kind of wonky Wozniak composite mode. And then let's see, what do we got here? Um, R24. Okay, I think that's that one there. Yes. Okay, R24 is a 47 kilo ohm. Okay. And what's that? Okay. Right, so let's see, I'm just looking here at the comments. So Chris points out only the diodes, transistors, and the uh, electrolytic capacitors are direction dependent. And of course, you know, like the, the chips themselves and the sockets. Um, Julian, greetings from France. Hello, what time is it there? Is it like nine or 10, 10 p.m. in France? Okay, uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and actually, I'm, I'm just going to stop here. So in case I screw up, then I haven't goofed up too many things. And I'm just going to solder um, everything that I've got. And I'm going to switch to my extra attractive uh, glasses here to let me see things closer. Which I can't actually read the comments now, but um, I'll be able to see the board. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll solder. Um, I cleaned the tip earlier, but I'm gonna go ahead and just do it anyway. And I do have a fan, but I'm not sure. I won't turn it on for now because I don't want it to be super loud, but if I start to feel like I'm poisoning myself, then I'll um, go ahead. So here, here's a question. Um, how many people actually use flux when they're doing like a brand new board like this because I've, I've sort of I've done it both ways where I've I've done boards where I just haven't used any flux at all if it's a you know if it's a brand new board like this and new components but then other ones like the the phaser kit I went ahead and I used flux on everything just because it seems like it works better so I'm just kind of curious what other people think because um, obviously if you're using flux then you got to clean it afterward um oops I didn't actually need any there so that can be kind of a pain but it's you know obviously helps the solder go on better all right so let's go ahead and start soldering these okay can I zoom in okay Can't actually, can't quite see what I'm doing here. I'm too far away. Okay, so these are kind of a pain. Don't make too much fun of my technique. Well, you're you're welcome to make fun of if you want. Um, one one thing that I just read is that if you look at the tip here, let me see if I can hold it up. I don't know if it's gonna be in focus or not, and I can't even tell because my glasses, but the tip that I have on this soldering iron is actually pretty sharp. Um, it's more of a point. And then um, somebody was just pointing out, you know, uh, it's a pun, that for jobs like this, you know, you really should be using something a little bit more blunt. And um, because you don't, you don't actually need to get in there with like a tiny little tip. Maybe if you're just doing like, surface mount components or something like that. So I'm kind of wondering whether I've been doing this wrong the whole time and I should be using kind of like more of a blunt tipped soldering iron. So if anybody wants to comment on that, feel free. 
Um, and oops. so what I'm trying to do when I solder is I'm trying to heat heat the metal itself so the um, the actual lead here the metal lead and the board itself and not the solder and then touch the solder to the actual um, components the metal so that it flows into it if you heat the solder and then just try and glob it on there then there's a chance that um, you won't have heated up the actual wire or the the, the little uh, hole the lead on the board enough and so it won't actually um, stick properly so that's what I try to do even though sometimes they fail Please. I'm not actually doing a great job here, so maybe somebody should not don't don't look at my technique here. Okay, I'm still missing one hole over here. I think I got them all. Can we see that? All right, let's see. What are people saying here in the chat? Um, look at blah, 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 blah. Yes, Dave, feel free to send all of your comments about the glasses. I can take it. Um, maybe if you're really lucky, I'll show you my my pictures from from grade school through high school with my nerdy glasses um, let's see I just use flux core solder yeah okay that's fair enough too so this actually um, this does have flux in it the solder is what does this say 2.5 percent um, Yeah, okay, so Chris Chris did echo the comments about the soldering um, iron where I'm just using a conical tip and he's saying screwdriver tip might be easier. I think I have one lying around. I'm not gonna change it now because it'll be hot. Um, let's see. The temperature, so I've got this, now that I've zoomed out, um, I have no idea what temperature it's actually at. Um, I've got it near at, at least on this Weller soldering station, it's at you know four and a half, which is close to the maximum of five, whatever that means. Um, it's a 30 watt soldering iron, so I don't know what the temperature is. Um, okay. So Captain 318, I work with tapered tips on a um, Keysger, I've never heard of that. K S G E R. Keysger T12 solder station. Um, cool. All right, and then I'm just going to go ahead and snip all these leads off. And I need some place to put all these. Um, well, and. I hope Mark Lemmert won't get mad. I'm gonna throw them into. I promise I'll, I'll, I'll wash it very carefully afterward. Um, these these little snips here actually, um, I bought these for use in model railroading. So this room that I'm in actually used to be my model railroad. Um, I had um, end scale, and so I used these to, to cut the, uh, the track when I was building it. And then kind of, I don't know, got bored with that hobby and realized that I was never going to actually finish the layout. It kind of took up most of the, you know, I bit off more than I could chew, basically. Um, yeah, this one's not coming off. But, yeah, so I... Pretty much took it all apart and sold it all. Um, it's kind of too bad, but I'll probably regret it at some point. 
just like my soft talk magazines when I threw them all away after I moved out of my house. Um, I got my glasses. Then I had to rebuy all the soft talks, so that was kind of sad. All right. Yeah. Um, lemon herb. Is that herb from Canada? Um, let's see. It says he had HO scale. Yeah, HO. Well, that was another reason too. Is actually um, N scales. You know, it's pretty tiny, and so it's hard to. You know, it's hard to see, and so I just found it was getting harder and harder to actually work on it. HO is actually easier to work on. Um, plus, you can do a lot more cool things like, you know, it's easier to add sound uh, to your locomotive. So even my N scale, I had, I had most of them were equipped with um, um, sound decoder boards, and then I had um, a whole like all the the decoders for the motor control and everything like that. But um, anyway, yeah. Julian says this kit is not very cheap. Um, uh, yeah, the duty is is I know it's always deadly. Uh, Chris says I should just drop all the, the the scrap wires on the floor so I can find them later with my feet. Yep, I I I'm sure I'll do that anyway. So I'll try to at least be a little bit careful. Um, so yeah. Anyway, back to back to Julian's uh, point about the the customs and duties it's i've been mailing all those booty boards for the apple II to people and um that's definitely a trade-off between trying to put the correct amount of insurance on the envelope but then whoever's buying it if they're international they're going to get charged a duty depending on what that is um so you can't win so let's keep going here so our 22 21 20 and 23 um, so let's see, R20, 20, 23, 20, 21, 22, 23, um, those are all 100 ohm resistors. Okay, so that'll be easy enough. <laughs> okay, Lemon Herb says, just watching the stream, no, oh, yes. Um, no bread making today. Um, yeah, I've been making a lot of bread also. Have other people been making bread? Been making it from scratch, just using, I have this recipe that's like no, what's it called? No knead, no knead bread dough. And so you, you basically, you don't have to do much kneading on it at all. You just kind of throw in the yeast, put it in to, to rise for like an hour and a half, and then it just, um, you just kind of fold it in half a couple times, rise some more, and then just bake it. Um, it's not sourdough, so it's just sort of a regular, it's just flour and salt and, and um, yeast and water, and that's it. Um, but Let's see, let's see, what's Dave saying about yes and no for duty to us? Most times I'm just kind of make it through. Yeah, so Canada seems like it's pretty good. Um, and the shipping is actually not as expensive to Canada, which is nice. It's still relatively expensive, but um, okay. Let's see, R6, 7, and 8 are, okay, 7 is a 1.5 kilo ohm. So that's this guy. Yes, okay. So this is seven. Okay. Um, eight. Wait, I've lost track. Eight is a two kilo ohm, okay. There we go. Okay, Herb says he does the same type of bread. 
Oh, that's actually kind of nice. So he saves a piece of it to uh, so he doesn't have to worry about the yeast. Yeah, actually, I bought yeast at one of our local um, bakeries. Um, they they were giving away sourdough yeast, and then you could also just buy a great big giant box of regular yeast because uh, you couldn't find it in the grocery stores. And so I went ahead and bought that. So let's see, R6 is a 2.7. All right. This is making me happy to use up all of these individual resistors so I don't have to worry about them. Um, more. Clearly, I'm not going to get this board, I'm sure, assembled today, but at least we'll have fun doing it. Um, yeah. Anyone have a link to this? What's the... so? Andre, is that how you pronounce it? Or An Andre? Andre? Um, I'm just wondering what you were looking for the link for. Is that for the stream or for something else? Um, okay, R9 is the 10 ohm. 10 ohms is very small. That's really interesting that it's even, I don't know. I wonder what that, I don't know what that resistor is for at R9. Anybody, anybody know off the top of their head? Okay, let's, let's just stop and do those before I get too distracted. Um, Andre, okay. Oh, you yes, right. I should put the link to the, um, to the actual kit. Let's see, I don't know if I can, let's see if I can paste this into the stream. Okay, there's that. And then, um, if you want the gigantic picture, I'll throw that in as well. Okay, let's see, R9, what does it say, Chris says, it's the collector resistor for the video output transistor. Ah, okay. Cool. So, Chris, I'm just curious, what's your what's your background? Because you like seem to know everything about this board. Um, so, just wondering if you want to comment on. I don't know where did you, where did you get all this knowledge? Okay, so there's that. Let's see. Right, so he's talking about the, there is a uh, transistor at Q3. Um, cool. Oh, thanks, Frederick. Love your LinkedIn profile pic with the Apple IIe keyboard. Cool. I think that's my Apple IIe that's upstairs on my desk. Um, somebody was complaining on the Facebook group about uh, using LCDs with a, with a retro computer. And... So my comment was that, you know, while I agreed with them, I actually do use uh, like an LCD with my Apple IIe, but only because it's also attached to my uh, work com my work laptop. So when I'm working upstairs in my office, I can actually switch between um, using the LCD with the Apple IIe or using it as the second monitor for my, uh, for my, my MacBook. Um, so just, you know, a CRT would take up too much room on the desk. So, uh, this is kind of a pain to do it at this angle. Wait, I must put on my secret um, superhero glasses here. Where? Okay, this isn't like not even in the picture, is it? Okay, that's better. All right. Oops. That's better. Why is the smoke like always going straight up? In my face. I'm missing. I'm missing one. Here.
Okay, nope, I'm missing one over there. Alright. This one looks messy. Okay, I think I got them all. Uh, let's see. XOR, Apple II Forever, yes. Okay, here's here's Chris's answer for how does he know so much? I've done component component level computer, I assume he's saying component level, computer service since I graduated high school in 1983, uh, ran a Franklin and Atari factory service center. Okay, that would definitely do it. Um, that's cool, that's super cool. Yeah, um, all right. So why, just out of curiosity, for the for the server center you were at, it was doing Franklin, but not. Does that mean it wasn't doing? Um, you weren't doing Apple's as well. Was that some sort of like um, licensing thing or something like that, where you were only allowed to work on on clones, or was that just what was more common or something in that? I don't know. I'm just curious. Oops, that was too close. Where did it go? There it is. Ah! In this three, you see that I didn't, I didn't solder those. Oops. that ah uh, hey Joe that's Joe Stro Snyder of uh, Joe's Computer Museum um, also working on an Apple II project for KFest yeah if if people have not signed up yet for um, Kansas Fest so normally Kansas Fest is held in Kansas City uh, at the end of July but this year it's going virtual uh, just because of the virus and so if you haven't signed up it's twenty dollars just go to kansas kansasfest.org um, and the twenty dollars actually gets you a pin so a commemorative pin along with some other uh, swag so there'll be some stickers um, hopefully a postcard or two and then you also um, get the link to the actual uh, event itself and so it's going to be two days a bunch of talks should be some really cool stuff. I'm gonna actually be demoing um, Nox Archaist, which is the the new um, computer role playing game from 6502 Workshop. So that's Mark Lemmert and his crew. Um, so I'm gonna be demoing that, and then I think actually Mark is going to uh, join in that as well. And we might actually we're gonna try and demo it on real hardware if we can if we can figure out how to hook that up to Zoom. Um, and you can actually go. There's a whole ton of um, whole ton of talks I can't remember how many sessions we've got lined up now at least 10 or 15 um, it's primarily Apple II, but there's also plenty of Atari folks that come and we even get a few Commodore every now and then um, so yeah if you're into retro computers definitely you know go to kansasfest.org and sign up for it. it should be fun not not quite as much fun as the the, the real one obviously but uh, still should be good let's see um, Is it Amanico? Says um, he built a ZX Spectrum clone, the Harlequin 128, a few months ago. That's super cool. Um, all right, Frederick. Thanks for uh, thanks for dropping in. And um, yep, 
You can catch up later. I think this will just be posted live afterwards. So cool. Thank you. All right. Okay. Excellent. All right. Um, yeah. Oh, and I should point out, speaking of uh, Julian's comment about um, the cost for Kansas Fest. So that is $20.00 total and then it's free shipping on the pin so it doesn't matter where you are in the world um, we will ship it to you and okay cool um, and I'm actually doing the all of the I foolishly volunteered to do all the shipping for that and so there'll be like 300 envelopes of stickers and pins and things going out of my basement so let's see what else do we have up here I know I'm missing something uh, there's another resistor there, R18. So let me get my cheat sheet back up here. R18 is 100 ohm. Okay, so R18 is another 100 ohm. That's the last of the 100 ohms, so that's good. R18, that goes there. Okay, and then I, I feel like I'm missing another resistor there. Uh, maybe not. Okay, that's that's a little variable resistor, so that's that's different. That's for the that's for the video output. Um, all right, there's a little inductor that goes there, L7. Let's see if we can actually find that just for fun to do something other than a resistor. Um, so here, let's see. Here's a bunch of capacitors. L1, more capacitors. L7. Okay. Uh, let's see. Alessio is asking uh, about the copyright on the board. So, yep, indeed. Can I hold it that way? You can see it's got the copyright. Um, this is a reproduction, though. It's it's completely a, a, a clone reproduction, uh, brand new. I think that Henry at Reactive Micro is just sort of not worrying about... Um, Apple coming after him. Here's his sticker on that board. Um, he's not, you know, obviously not marketing this as an actual real Apple II board or something like that. It's definitely um, marked all over as, you know, a clone. And on the website, it's completely clear that it's also a clone. Um, I think at this point, you know, I don't, I think the chances of Apple coming after somebody for that are, are pretty low. Um, there's been people making other Apple II and Apple I clones for years. And, um, as far as I know, nothing's nothing bad has ever happened to them. All right, so here's L7, which is an inductor, and this, um, as far as I can tell, this this one, yeah, this is not direction dependent. Um, somebody yell at me if it is before I manage to actually solder it, but I don't see any markings that indicate that it is. So we're just gonna stick that in there. Uh, so yeah, so Joe's question about the size of Kansas Fest. So I think we're up to about 260 people right now. So we're not actually at 300, but um, that was just my guess for how many we'll actually be up to. Um, and there's actually um, some some people that wouldn't normally come to Kansas Fest, um, either you know international or also some folks who um, maybe kind of bigger names in the industry. Um, I don't want to necessarily say who they are because I don't know if they you know want people to to necessarily know, but um, you know, we did, I will say we had, um, Robert Woodhead lined up to be the keynote speaker this year, um, at the live one. And so that didn't work out. Um, so Robert Woodhead was one of the co-create, he's the co-creator of Wizardry, 
which was the Apple II, you know, one of the first uh, computer role-playing games, and that was for the Apple II. And um, so he is signed up for the virtual event. Um, he, we're not gonna, um, you know, he decided to, to not do his, his keynote and just wait until next year, hopefully. Um, but he is signed up for the virtual event, so hopefully he'll attend and um, maybe, you know, we'll get a chance to ask him some questions or something like that. So, okay, Chris says, L7 is not direction dependent. Okay, the series choke for the video out jack. Okay, good, thanks for, yeah, I just had this sudden fear that uh, it was. Okay, excellent. Um, and we've been kind of telling um, lots of people about you know about Kansas Fest, and I think somebody tweeted out to, to you know um, people who might be interested but wouldn't normally come to it. Um, so we'll see who shows up to that. Okay, cool. All right, so that's actually starting to look pretty good. Um, why don't we? There's these little resistor packs here, so. There's one there at, uh, let's see, RA01. And then there's another one, I thought, somewhere else on the board. Um, let me go ahead and, wait, I should have organized these better beforehand. Okay, L7 is done, so I'm gonna get rid of that package. Um, these are all too fat. CR1. So seeing this is some sort of diode, right? Alright, let's go ahead and do that one. So CR1. This one actually is direction dependent, and I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little black line on the bottom of that diode there, and that tells you um that lines up with the on the board itself so here's where CR1 goes and you can see here let me flip it around so you can actually um, see it the right way and you can see there's a black line there on the actual board itself so you don't mix up the orientation so that you want to put that in just so it lines up like that uh, so there's just a few components that are direction dependent so just pay attention when you're doing that This is a tiny little guy. Okay, there's that one. Oops. Okay, uh, let's see. -da 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 -da. Uh, I'm just catching up. JB Maru, I'm from France too. Got an Apple IIc in 1988 from my older cousin. Uh, very cool. Um, Okay, let's see what else here. Uh, let's see. Hold on, I'm just... Frederick is still uh, posting even though I thought he said he had to leave, so I guess we must be more interesting than, uh, than he actually thought. Um, the dot on the resistor network is the common to all the resistors in the package. That dot right there, I assume that's what you're talking about. Sorry if I keep pointing to stuff and then you're not actually able to see it. Um, okay, so CR1 we just took care of. Here's the resistor packs. So RA1 and RA3. So these resistor packs are kind of cool. They're just like one common and then all those terminals and so they all have the same resistance and it's just like a much more efficient way of actually putting them in. I'm assuming that these are all identical. Um, oops.
Yeah, 102, 102, and 102, okay. And then, so you can see on these, there's a little dot um, right there, which indicates the, um, the common line that goes to all those resistors. And so I'm assuming that that dot has to actually go up at the, to line up with the dot on the actual board right there. So that would go in, for example, like that. All right, I think actually, I don't think I'm gonna put that in right now because that's kind of tall. So I'm just gonna leave those right there for now. Um, let's see, what else can we put in here? Uh, not that much. Why don't we, let's try and figure out, we'll put in some more resistors uh, just to get those all done. So pretty much got everything. I'm looking at my board up here in case you're wondering what I'm staring at. Um, there's a few resistors just down near the bottom. So let's go ahead and we'll do, we'll do some of those and try and take care of all of them. Okay, let's see. Um, Okay, Chris says he wants to go to Kansas Fest. I assume that you've signed up for Virtual Kansas Fest, hopefully. Um, cool. Yeah. Excellent. Um, I'm just reading the, all the, the comments. Will you recycle chips from an Apple, Apple II? No. So this kit actually comes with all the chips, so... At the beginning, I showed, and I'll just show you all again. So here's here's a lot of the sockets and a whole bunch of the chips. Um, so you can see it comes with everything. And then here's the ROMs themselves. So this is, um, you can, well, you can see they're labeled D0, D8, E0, E8, F0, F8. Um, so this is the 27 series board, which means it comes with the 2716 EEPROMs. So these are not what would have been in a original um, Apple II or II Plus. Instead, these are um, more modern chips and they're just easier to program. Um, well, I mean not easier, but they're easier to source and get. And you can actually buy this board in the um, original configuration where it uses the old style ROMs and then you have to order the ROMs separately. Uh, but Henry carries those as well. So yeah, it comes it pretty much comes with everything you need except for obviously like a power supply and um, the keyboard. So all right, let's see what do we got going on here. I'm gonna go ahead and put in some more resistors. So here's R25 down here. Did I actually ever solder in? No, I never soldered in this one up here. Oops. All right, let me go ahead and do that. Yeah, so if you um, if you don't know about Nox Archaeus, so that was the mug that I was using earlier, um, and I talked about that uh, session at Kansas Fest. So I definitely, um, if you haven't heard of the game, we did a Kickstarter um, about a year ago, which was successful, and so it's going to be a brand new computer role-playing game for the Apple II. Um, so it is designed to run on uh, original hardware. So actually, for the so it'll work on the 2E, the 2C, and the 2GS. Uh, so you need 128K. Um, it won't work on the 2 Plus or original Apple II. Um, or you can play it in an emulator as well. And so the game is mostly finished. So Mark Lembert is the um, primary developer on it. And he is pretty much wrapping up. Um, he's getting ready to do the beta testing in just a few weeks. And we have all of the... Um, Physical uh, like reward items are already done. Um, in fact, if you guys excuse me for one minute, I'll go and actually grab. I'll grab one. Uh, let's see.
So either my stream is really behind or something because I just left and I came back and it looks like I'm still soldering. So uh, that was kind of cool. So I just wanted to show you guys if you're still around. Um, let me see if you guys can see this. Um, yeah, so here's the box for Nux Archaist. Um, and so this is all brand new stuff. Comes with a cloth map. Put that up. So there's that. And then other things in the box. Uh, you have your writ from the queen, which is sealed. Um, these discs don't have anything on them yet, but it's going to come with floppy disks. Uh, comes with. It also comes with the game on a. Can I hold that up? A little USB stick, which looks like a floppy disk, um, and so this will actually have the game image on it, a disk image of the game, and then also a copy of um, an emulator, so you can actually run it straight off of the USB stick. Um, and then if you get the box set, you get a coin. So this is a coin of the realm here, and it comes with other things like a magic crystal. Um, so anyway, if you missed the Kickstarter, you can actually go um, just do a just do a search for for um, Nox Archaist and 6502 Workshop, and there's actually a way to pre-order um, pre-order the game if you miss the Kickstarter, and you can get the uh, the collector set. So hopefully it'll be out in just a few months. Um, cool. And. Just a couple more things. Here's, let's see if you can see those. Here's some stickers. So I'm gonna put these into everybody's little Kansas Fest care package, um, just because I'm the one sending it. So I can throw those in there. All right, let's keep going. So we were, wait, let me check the chat again, just to make sure somebody's not yelling at me about doing something horribly wrong here. Um, Linux, I don't know what somebody's talking about here. Um, if you're talking about Nox Archaist, yes, you should be able to run that on Linux. Um, is it Lin, Apple is the name of the emulator, I think, on Linux. Um, it's not going to, uh, let's see, we've tested it. Um, I don't remember if we've tested it recently, but yeah, it'll, it'll definitely run on Linux as well, um, if that's what you're talking about. Okay, cool. Um... Dave, what are you talking about the lag? Is that between the video and the, the audio or? All right, I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, let me just keep going. So, where was I here? I keep switching glasses because I can only see one thing with them. So R25. All right, R25 is a 27 ohm. So that's the last one of these, so that's good. And throw that in there. Um, okay, let's see what else we have. There should be a couple more, R14 which is a one kilo ohm. Okay, that's down near the bottom there. So get that one in there. Um, oops, you guys can't quite see. All right, so there's that one there. Just stab myself. Um, R26 is right there, and so that is, what is R26? A 2.2 .2 mega ohm. Okay, somebody's pounding upstairs. Um, so, put that one in. Okay, and what else? There's another one 
There should be one right here. R5. Okay, that one. R5 is a one kilo ohm. Okay. Okay, what does Andre say here? It might be best to move your webcam to the top right corner and maybe even shrink it a tad bit. You talking about this one here? Is that better? I don't know what top, let's see, which which way is top left? Towards, towards me? All right, tell me, tell me if that is better. Um, I can also swivel it more like that. Oh, my face cam. I'm not sure what to do about that. Um, it looks, I'm using OBS for the capture software and then I'm just pumping that straight into YouTube. Um, so I don't know if there's much I can do about the lag for that. Move your head. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Okay, so tell me tell me if that's better when I'm actually working here. I'll try to not block too much stuff. Um, and now I'm dropping resistors. All right, let me just keep going. So. Oh. Hold on. OBS. This window. Okay. I think I did that. Let me know if that's better. Um, Okay, excellent, thank you. Sorry that it took me so long to figure out what the heck you were talking about there. Um, yes, what is, Usama Larbi says, use your PC for streaming only. Yes, I should do that, but instead I'm using it for everything. Um, all right, I know, I need another computer. Um, all right, let's go ahead. I was just about to put this one in here, R5. So let's do that, and R5 was a one kilo ohm. Okay, good. Okay. Um, so if you're curious, uh, Be Righteous there is actually Michael Packard, who writes a whole bunch of, um, he's written a whole bunch of Apple II games. So if you don't know about his games, definitely check it out. You can find him on um, Facebook, and I'm not, I know he has a website, but um, Michael, do you want to throw your link to your website into the uh, into the chat? Um, so yeah, he's he's like a super prolific uh, Apple II developer. And what games? Speaking of that, what games do you have coming out soon? Don't you have something coming out? <clears throat> okay, and then there's another. Let's see, R27 right there. And R27 is a what? R27, I just missed it probably. It's a 4.7 kilo ohm. Okay, 4.7 kilo ohm. Uh, so if you're just joining now, I actually, um, when I got the kit from Henry, I went through and measured all the resistors uh, just using a multimeter to and labeled them because they came unlabeled. So you might want to do that if you buy the kit. Just go ahead and label everything ahead of time because it'll make your life a lot simpler. So let's see, this goes in R27. Um, and I'm doing all the resistors first just because they're flat, so they won't fall out then if I'm trying to do other stuff. It doesn't really matter that much what order you do things because you can always just bend the little leads over and they're gonna stay in anyway. Uh, but just just seems better to do it that way. So. Okay. 
Yeah, Michael says he's kind of a big deal. Yep. I would agree. I have autographed copies of his games, too. I wonder... Uh, I don't know if... I don't know if I have it within easy reach, but I've got one of his games around here. Lunar Rescue is coming out in July. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what's up with Trader Invader? I keep waiting for that one. All right. So with Trader Invader, are you going to have... Um, you gonna have a box set? Are you gonna do a Kickstarter? All right, let's see. This is this tip is starting to look terrible. Um, and of course, I have this is my I don't know if you can see it, but my iPhone cable is running right. Um, in front of the soldering iron, which probably isn't the wisest choice, but okay. Oops. God. No swearing on the the channel. So I, I'm usually not very, I don't know, I don't think I'm very good at soldering and uh, my, uh, my brother-in-law is a computer science and electrical engineer and I, I made the mistake once of asking him if he wanted to take a soldering class with me just to get better. And so it turned out he actually, he worked for, he's worked for a lot of companies, but he worked for Sun Microsystems and he was actually like their soldering champion or something like that. So. Um, so I horribly insulted him, but okay, cool. <clears throat> so this kit has, I think it's two thousand one hundred and seventy solder points. So um, if you're not very good at soldering, I think you will be better by the end of it. Hopefully, uh, if not, you'll at least be more tired because um, that's a lot of soldering so I would definitely it's not I mean it's not a hard kit it's all through hole stuff so I think if you just take your time with it um, you know of course I have no idea if mine's gonna work or not but if you take your time with it and um, just kind of slowly work at it you shouldn't really have any problems with it pretty much all of Henry's kits are, are straightforward easy to assemble he has good um, pictures on his website his instructions are sometimes a little bit minimal um, but most of the time you can actually just figure out from either the labels on the, the board itself or from the pictures on his wiki where everything goes um, so I definitely would recommend you know pretty much any of his kits um, and you know you can also buy his stuff assembled as well, but that's that's not quite as much fun. So, let's see. Alessio says, "Let me suggest you get a magnifying lamp with a kit." Um, you mean like this? I probably just blinded everybody. Um, yeah, I I tried that, but then the problem is it actually just completely swamped out the. Um, it was too bright. So it was just reflecting off of the board, but that, yes, exactly. Um, good idea. Cool. Chris says, your kit will work. It has to. TTL is too stupid not to work. Yes, I agree. Um, and Joe says, the only way it won't work is if you put something backwards. So that was the mistake I made with the, the phaser kit from um, Reactive Micro that I did on my channel about a month and a half ago. Um, I ended up, there was one chip on there that is orient, orient, oriented the, 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 how do I say that? It was in the wrong direction compared to the rest of the chips. And of course I didn't realize that, so I put them all in the same direction. Um, and luckily it didn't actually damage anything, but it didn't work until I took it out and flipped it around. So you're absolutely right. As long as you put in all the chips correct, 
uh, it should just work. So let's see, R28 is over here, and R28 is a one kilo ohm. So we're getting down on our resistors and find out if we're missing any. R12 and R12 is a 12 kilo ohm. So that's the last of the 12 kilo ohms there. So that's good. And then just above that is R13, which. What is R13? R13 is a 3.3 mega ohm. Okay, so that's, there's only one of those, that's good. Okay. And again, it doesn't matter about the orientation of these resistors, but I am putting them all in facing the same direction, just, um, and that's also kind of useful to put them in facing the same way, because then if you actually do make a mistake, and put one in the wrong way, it'll make it easier just using the color codes to identify uh, which one it is, right? You know, otherwise, if they're all flipped around different directions. Um, once you've, you know, once you've soldered stuff into a board like this, it's, it's makes it harder to actually measure things. So like resistances, capacitors or whatever, um, just because everything's all connected together. And so you'll just pick up all these, you know, different stray readings or something like that. So, um, you, you know, if you did put in a resistor, the wrong resistor, you'd probably have to just look at them all to figure out which one it was. Okay, so let's see, R2 and R3, so I saw those. Um, R3 is 150 ohm. So this is R3. And... Let's see. Turn the light off, he says. That one? No, that's not. Well, then it's too dark. Okay, how's that? Is that better? Okay, let's see. Oh yes. Hey Bob. Sorry, I didn't let you. Um, didn't let you know I finally got it working again. It was a Titanic struggle. Um, and let's see. R two is. 47 ohm. So. Yeah, so Michael's saying usually when he sees one of these videos or something like that, he just has to own whatever it is. Um, I'm kind of the same way. It's. I, I do end up buying most new things. Um, especially if it's like a kit or something like that, unless it's something that I just can't use. Like, I don't actually own a 2GS, shockingly, so I typically don't buy anything for a 2GS. Um, but other than that, if it's like for the 2E or the 2C or the uh, 2 Plus, then I'll typically, I'll end up buying it. So let's see, R4 is a 47 ohm. Yeah, I have a huge pile of cards which I'm not currently using most of which are like some sort of like SD card or CFFA type card uh, for for doing mass storage on an Apple II um, just because I end up wait that one did I put one of these in backwards this one um, I just buy them and then test them and then you know sometimes I'll do a video on them or something like that but I only have you know my working computers are an Apple IIe upstairs and then my Apple II Plus, and, and then I also have an Apple IIc, and so there's only so many SD card solutions that you can use in those. Let's see, and then this last one, this is the one, um, let's see if you can see it here, down in the corner, this is um, resistor R1, and so this is unlabeled. So Henry, oh, actually, I think the R is right there. In fact, I think it got punched by the hole. Now that I look at it. So anyway, so this is resistor number one, R1. Uh, so if you get the kit, just know that that's, that's what that one is. 
Um, so thanks to Chris Auger for pointing that out. And R1 is, I assume R1 is actually this 330 ohm. Is that, is that correct? I don't see another R1 on there. Yeah, Chris, is that is that um, a 330 ohm? That's what I'm going to assume, and I'm just going to start putting it in there, and then check the chat before I actually solder. Okay. All right, good. So I have two resistors left. Where am I missing resistors? I'm looking here's here's my other board. Okay. Oh, there. I just found them. Here they are down here on the left side at uh, D1. Okay, so that's R31 and R32, which I sure hope are one kilo ohm. Um, yes. Awesome. All right, so that's it for the resistors for the board. Yep, D, yep, Chris is right. D1, that's exactly where it was. Um, all right, cool. It's actually not that many, I don't know. It doesn't seem like a lot, oops. It doesn't seem like a lot of resistors for the board. Um, which is kind of nice. All right, so let's just go ahead and solder all of those. And just using a flux pen here just to clean them off and just make the flux go on. Uh, just to flow a little bit easier. Are you, yes, so uh, Joe Snyder is asking if I'm practicing for our challenge. So Joe and Javier Rivera and I are going to have a, a, a contest, a soldering contest. Um, Joe's making, um, it's like a, an LED matrix where it's the, the Apple II logo. And so he's going to be selling these kits um, on his store. And so he's going to send one to me and um, Javier, and we're going to do a live stream where we uh, race to see who can finish it first. Um, which, you know, probably racing and soldering isn't a necessarily a great thing to do, but um, we'll see how it turns out. Um, he's actually shown, he's shown some pictures of it on Facebook. So if you're curious uh, what he's building, just go on there and uh, you can check it out. Cool. Oops. Hopefully my head isn't in the way. Also, danger of melting the cord here. Um, I'm getting worse. See, he says Joe's waiting for LEDs to arrive from China. Yes, that's same problem with the booty board. Um, so if you're not familiar, that's a um, Apple II card that lets you um, 
use a USB stick as a hard drive, basically. And David Mutimer in Australia uh, makes the boards, and then he's shipping them to me, and then I sell them on my store. But the the, the big hang up is getting the actual um, the PCBs and the the chips from from China. Um, did I forget to solder those? Yeah. Okay, I'll do that in a second. Um, so he's been waiting about a month, maybe to maybe two months to get more to get more chips in. And as soon as he gets them, then he he can assemble the cards and send them to me. Um, but yeah, things are definitely slow. So. Chris says I have access to it. Yes, Chris, how much, how much to send your wave soldering uh, equipment to me? Just don't tell Joe or Javier. Um, oh wait, I already put flux on those. So I've never actually done that kind of soldering before, so that actually might be uh, maybe a bad idea. But I always looked cool. All right, there's that. Um, how many, let's see, DES, how many booty cards have been sold? Uh, that's a good question, let me think. Um, probably around 100, I'd have to I'd have to look it up to get an exact count, say, but um, I wanna say it's around at least, uh, Hundred that I have sold, and then David, I'm sure he's he sold a bunch more, um, and just shipped them from Australia directly. Um, so I have no idea how many he sold. Um, and then I've got a if you if you go on my website, um, so it's here. I'll just type into the chat. Um, just go to ct6502.org. Um, yeah, if you go there, you can actually put your name on a um, a wait list to be notified when it's back in stock. Um, and I think right now there's like about 65 people who are actually on that wait list, um, which I'm really hoping that I can get that many in from 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 David. I don't want to take pre-orders anymore because um, that was just kind of stressful to have everybody's money um, and then not actually have the cards and just be waiting on Australia Post. Uh, but you can put your name on, down on the list to be notified when they're back in stock. Um, and they're $50 plus um, $7 shipping if you're in the U.S. or somewhere around 12 or 15 if you're international. All right, um, so that's all the resistors. Let me, let me just, I don't think, I probably won't do much more soldering today. Let's see, I got those out, but I didn't do them. Because um, I think this channel has been going on for, I'm coming up on an hour and a half. So let me just show you... For those of you who are just joining, so this is the, or join later, you know, this is the reactive micro kit. Um, you get everything you need to, to uh, recreate uh, a Rev7 Apple II Plus board. Um, I think the kits are like between $175 and $200, depending on which flavor you get. So everything in the kit, you get obviously the board, you get all the resistors and capacitors. Um, I showed a little bit earlier, you know, here's all the, there's all the chips that go on the board. There's tons and tons of, of sockets. So here's all the sockets for all the chips. Um, and then you get all the other, let's see, here's the resistors, capacitors, no, no more resistors. Here's like the uh, audio and video jacks. Here's the power, um, that's where you plug in the power connector to the board. So you get everything you need and it's actually a really nice kit and Henry has you know really good pictures on the website um, here's the, the edge connectors which I think are super cool that you can actually still buy those or at least get them manufactured um, so I think I'll probably stop for now and this should be available on YouTube afterwards um, and then I'm actually I'll probably film another video where I, I kind of um, go through the kit in a little bit more um, in depth. It'll be a shorter video, but just kind of more about the kit itself um, and the assembly. But if you guys like this, let me know. 
um, if you want me to do another one, you know, maybe next time, you know, maybe I'll do all the capacitors just, you know, on my own. And then next time I can do some more interesting things like all the, you know, the sockets or the edge connectors or something like that. Um, oh, okay. And Chris, Chris has some more tips here. Install um, electrolytic capacitor C2 after the card slot socket. Um, okay. Excellent. Thank you for the Thank you for the tip. Hopefully, I will remember that. Um, cool. All right. So, till next time. Thanks, you guys, for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, be sure to subscribe to it. And otherwise, I'll just catch you guys in the next video. Thanks. And now I have to actually figure out how to stop it. All right, bye.